Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel All About Electronics. So this question is related to the data acquisition system. So before we jump into the question, first of all, let me briefly explain about this data acquisition systems. So as its name suggests, this data acquisition system acquires the input signal and converts it into the digital signal. Now typically, the signal which we are acquiring is the real world signal and mostly this signal is not in the electrical form. So first of all, with the help of the transducer, the incoming signal is converted into the electrical signal. Then after, it also has the signal conditioning block. So this signal conditioning block typically consists of the filters as well as the amplifiers. So once the signal passes from the signal conditioning block, then it is given to the sample and hold circuit. So the sample and hold circuits samples the data at the particular interval and then the sample data is given to the ADC. So this ADC converts this analog voltage into the digital form. Now many times this data acquisition system consists of more than one channels. But for the conversion it has only one ADC. So in such case the system also consists of the multiplexer. So what this multiplexer do? It selects the particular channel for the specific interval. So during that interval, the signal of the specific channel is acquired and it is converted into the digital form. Then after, the multiplexer selects the another channel and the signal of that channel is acquired. So if we have the four channels, then the specific channel will get selected only at the every fourth interval. So due to this multiplexing, of course we can acquire the more data, but at the same time, the sampling interval will also increase. That means the each channel will get the time after the every fourth interval. So for example, if the sampling interval is equal to Ts or the sampling frequency is equal to Fs, then due to the multiplexing four channels, the sampling frequency will reduce by four. That means if we see the sampling frequency of the each channel, then in that case, it will be equal to Fs divided by four. So the sampling frequency decides the rate at which the input signal is get sampled. So if you want to increase the sampling frequency, then what we can do, instead of doing the multiplexing, we can use only single channel. And that is exactly what is done in this specific question. So in this question, only the channel 1 is selected for the acquisition. So here for the conversion, the 12-bit successive approximation type ADC is used. And we have been given that its conversion time is equal to 5 microsecond. That means in this case, the sampling frequency for the channel 1 is equal to Fs. So here, the sampling frequency depends on the conversion time of the ADC as well as the other delays in the system. But here, since no other delays have been given to us, so we will assume that this conversion time will decide the maximum sampling frequency. So here, the conversion time of the ADC is equal to 5 microsecond. So once the ADC samples the data and the time which is required by the ADC to convert that data into the digital form is known as the conversion time. So before this conversion time, we cannot sample the another data. That means here, this sampling interval is also equal to 5 microsecond. Or we can say that the sampling frequency Fs is equal to 1 divided by Ts. That is equal to 1 divided by 5 microsecond. That means here, the sampling frequency is equal to 200 kilohertz. That means at this interval, the input signal at the channel 1 is getting sampled. Now here, if Fi is the input signal frequency, then to avoid the aliasing, the input signal should get sampled at the Nyquist rate. That means here, the sampling frequency Fs should be at least two times the input signal frequency. Or for the given sampling frequency, this input signal frequency should be less than the Fs by 2. So in this case, since the sampling frequency is equal to 200 kHz, that means here, this input signal frequency should be less than this 200 kHz divided by 2. That means here, this input signal frequency should be less than 100 kHz. So if we satisfy this condition, then we will not have any aliasing effect. Now whenever we acquire the data from the specific channel, then we do not have the control over the input signal frequency. But what we can do, we can select the cutoff frequency of the filter in a such a way that 
we can avoid this aliasing. That means here the cutoff frequency of the filter FC should be less than 100 kilohertz. So with this condition, we can avoid the effect of aliasing in the given question. That means here the cutoff frequency FC of the filter should be less than 100 kilohertz. And therefore, for the given question, this A is the correct answer.